Hi, and welcome to Financial Foundations. I'm Shannon. And I'm Hall. We are covering the topic of budgeting in March. So thanks for joining us for our third session. We're answering one question today, but it's a big one. Big one. We're splitting it up into two. The question is, how should I build a budget? The very basic principle of a budget is that it's a math formula. It's a subtraction formula, actually. You've got your in, excuse me, income on one side, you've got your expenses subtracted from income, and that's your budget, essentially. Pretty easy, right? So to start, it's all about data collection. Uh, we talked in our last video about ways to build it, how to keep up with it. So whether you're using a pen and paper or an Excel sheet or an app, pull that out as you're working through this, and here we go. I'm going to use the example of a spreadsheet as we talk through just to be consistent. So on your spreadsheet, the first thing you do is to put all income. This could be paychecks, side jobs, alimony, child support, bonuses, social security, money that you find under the couch. It's all going to get listed out in its own separate line item under income. You'll total all of that up. That's your income for the month and that's your starting point for the budget. If you're married, you'll want to put all income together. If you're partnered with somebody financially, you'll want to put all income together as well. The second part of your budget will be the expenses. I like to say that these are outflows, not necessarily expenses, because we want to include things in this category that aren't necessarily spending. Um, saving goes under this category. Giving goes under this, under this umbrella as well. So much like you did with the income, you're going to want to list out every category that you can think of and put a number by it. It's hard to come up with that number. Very. This is the most labor intensive piece of the whole budget making process. So be really nice to yourself. Maybe do it in a time of day uh, when you're in a patient mindset. Um, you're going to want to pull up the last three or four months worth of credit card or debit or bank statements. It's going to be nauseating. You're going to ca categorize everything into groups. Every time you go to Kroger, you're going to want to put that on a grocery category. Anytime you go to the gas station, you're going to want to group all of those things together and put it in a gas category. Add everything up and divide it by the number of months that you're looking at. So if you've pulled three months worth of information and in that time frame you spent $900 on gas, your monthly gas average is $300. This can be tricky with modern categories like Amazon. Um, if I wouldn't, we would encourage you not to just have Amazon as a budget category, mm -hmm. but to go back and look at what the order was for and put it in the appropriate place. Target can be difficult too, or stores like that. You know, when I go to Target, I'm not necessarily just buying groceries or just buying clothes, it's a combination. So you might not need to actually get out a receipt and do some detective work to split that out as well. It's so important to do this part with curiosity and not judgment. Absolutely. Um, did I miss anything, Hall, as far as that fact-finding mission for ex for outflows and expenses? Yeah, I would just add that <clears throat> for us, during that discovery period, it showed us what categories we needed as well. But mm -hmm. when we started it, I didn't think we needed a coffee category. Mm -hmm. I don't drink coffee, but my wife does. So we realized, okay, that is an expense, um, and there's a community aspect to it, and so it's important. And so we wanted to allocate for that in the budget as well. And so just figuring out what allocations you need in your own specific budget, everyone's going to look a little bit different. But just know <clears throat> if you are passionate about something, it doesn't mean you shouldn't spend there. It just means plan to spend there accordingly. Yep. And again, this is the fact-finding mission. So we're not putting down on your spreadsheet at this point what you'd like to happen. We're putting down in the spreadsheet what has happened mm -hmm. and breaking it down, like Hall said, into categories exactly. that you might not even have known existed. Yeah. Once you do have all those facts together, now it's time to build that budget. So let's say you were spending $300 a month on gas. Um, or I'd like to use restaurants as an example. Maybe you're spending $400 a month on eating out at restaurants and you realize, hey, I don't want to be spending $400 a month at restaurants. I, as much as I like eating out, I think I can do it 
but do it on a little more cost effective or do it a couple times less, maybe just spend 250. So you determine where that budget should look like, what you want it to look like for the upcoming month. And you're basically telling that money where to go. And so now instead of spending 400, now you know you got to work inside the realm of 250 in that eating out budget. Maybe it's uh, $60 for that coffee budget or whatever it may be. You're setting in place realistic um, expectations, but goals for where you want to tell your money where to go. And you're going to, that's what's going to um, build that complete budget. Once you have it, the budget should equal zero. Your income at the end of the month should be zero once you subtract all the expenses. That doesn't mean that all that you're bringing in goes towards all your needed expenses. It means you've assigned every dollar a job. So part of that budget should also be saving. It should be giving. It should could be investing. It could be paying off debt. Um, that You just want to make sure every single dollar has a name. So let's say you budget it and you realize, hey, my income's X and my expenses are Y. I have a $400 a month surplus, but Hall, you told us that needs to be zero. What do I do with that $400? First of all, congratulations. You're doing a great job budgeting. Um, you can have more, you can have less, whatever it may be, but you've come in under budget. That's a big win. Second of all is, okay, for that 400, where do we want that to go to work for us? I'm gonna encourage you to go back step by step and look at, okay, if I have extra money, is there debts that I can be piling this onto and paying off that debt faster? You're debt free other than the house, great. Next step, all right, let's try to build up that emergency fund to a healthy, fully funded emergency fund. That's the very next step of the process. Now that $400 a month is going every single month into that emergency fund until that's to a fully, um, fully designated amount because um, that's part of the budget too. And then let's say that's taken care of the very next step. Okay, is retirement on the run? Do I have that where it needs to be at a sustainable rate? What amount is that for me specifically? It can vary from individual to individual. A lot of people like to throw out 15% as kind of a general number and that's great, a great starting point. But if you wanna dig deeper into it, you can always reach out, talk to one of us or um, <clears throat> just to kind of get to know your situation a little bit better and be a little more targeted. But that'd be the next step is saving for retirement. You, let's say you got that on the run. Next step, possibly paying for saving for college for kids, paying off the house early, or just building wealth, living and giving like no one else down the road. Yeah. Figuring out what those longer term goals are, working towards those together. Anything the, you would add, Shannon? The important thing, I think, is just not to consider that leftover money. It exactly. needs to have a job to do, whether it's in a spending category or a savings category. Yeah. What happens if you subtract expenses from income and you get a negative number? That means one of two things. You've got an income problem or you got an expense problem. You need to figure out how to reconcile those two. Am I, <clears throat> am I living above my means right now? If so, let's go revisit that budget. Maybe that $400 you're eating out, um, that only right now has to be $300. And maybe you're cutting back on a cable subscription you don't use or a gym membership. You're finding ways to tighten down the budget and truly just spend what you're needing to spend this month. If you've done that and you feel like you've squeezed every penny you can out of that budget, um, one, we have budget coaches who'd be happy to um, work with you. And then two, look on the other side of the equation, my income. Am I optimizing my income? Are there side hustles I can pick up? Can I ask for that raise at work? Um, are there other types of work I could be doing or ways to optimize my current work to increase that type of income and then working together to make sure those are reconciled and then creating that zero-based budget from there? Anything you would add? Well, the this is the process where we're past the data collection yes. and now we are starting to ask questions. I think that the prominent word here needs to be grace. You are not trying to scold yourself or shame yourself. You're just curious and you're asking questions about what you'd like the situation to look like compared to where it is now. So what are some questions to ask once you have the budget in place? Yeah, so first you wanna, I, this is personally how I do it, but I would break it down in terms of expenses of the essential expenses versus non-essential non expenses. The essential consists of kind of the four walls of the house per se, um, living, mortgage, rent, 
clothing, necessary clothing, very different from unnecessary clothing, uh, transportation and food. Again, necessary food. So make sure you have all of those taken care of. Those are the essentials. The non-essentials are the YouTube TV subscription, the gym membership, the um, pairs of shoes you buy, whatever it may be. Those are where you can really start to tighten down the budget. And none of those are bad things, but oh, you yeah. just need to be aware of what you need versus what you want so that if you have to tweak the budget a little bit, you know which category to look at. Yeah. Another few questions to ask are what could change in your future and why? So are any of the budget categories going to increase? Do you, are you expecting more children? Are you going to be moving into a house that might require higher utility costs? Uh, are kids going to be starting school and need private school tuition? Um, any Anything in the next year that you can identify as a life change, it's important to ask yourself how that will affect your expenses. And raise, like income as well. You want to account for what's changing on the income yeah. side too. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, another flip side of that is what categories might you expect to decrease in the near future? Do you have kids moving from expensive daycare to free public school? Are you getting rid of debt? Are you going to free up some of those debt payments? That's going to change the category significantly. Do you have children who are leaving the nest? Is some of that money going to come back into your own pocket? Uh, and like Hall said, maybe we need to anticipate the decrease on the inside too, on the income side too. Uh, finally, it, as opposed to what you feel like is going to happen, ask yourself what you want to happen. And you alluded to this a little bit earlier, and this is the last thing. Um, what categories do you want to increase? Where do you feel pinched? What would you love to give yourself more freedoms in? In which categories do you look at and say, I don't feel good about how much we're spending there. I don't like that. You don't have to make a change today, but being aware of what categories fall in which of those different buckets will help you to make tiny changes over the course of a long period of time that will really add up to have an impact on your budget. The most important key here is the awareness that it all brings. Mm -hmm. And so that awareness is going to allow you to work more towards what Shannon's talking about. What categories do I want to increase? A lot of people choose travel as one of them. Gift giving is another exciting one for people. And then other people realize, hey, I'm spending 800 bucks a month eating out. And I don't... I can put my money to work harder for me elsewhere. Just the awareness that it brings. Again, we don't care what those numbers are. It's personal to you. Maybe you love eating out. That that could be it. Um, just figure out what it is for you and work towards it intentionally. That was a doozy. Thanks for staying with us. And if you have questions about your specific situation, let us know. We've got financial coaches ready to help, and uh, we're excited to cheer you on in your journey. Thanks. Thanks.